In this lecture, you're going to learn about use reducer hook in React. We use use reducer hook for state management in React. So just like use state, we can also use use reducer for state management. Use reducer gives you a more concrete way to handle complex states. So just like use state, we can use use reducer for managing the state and also for re-rendering the component whenever the state changes. Let's understand use reducer with a simple example. Let's go ahead and let's close this app component for now. And inside this components folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder reducer demo. Inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file and I will call it demo.js. And inside this reducer demo, I'm also going to create another file and I will call it demo.css. So we are going to use this demo component to understand use reducer. Now inside this demo component, let's go ahead and let's create a function. Let's call it demo. And let's also go ahead and export this demo function. Now from within this demo function, we want to return some JSX. And in order to save some time, I have already written that JSX. So let's grab it from here and Let's go ahead and let's return it from this demo component. And to design this demo component, I have also written some CSS. Let's grab that CSS from here and let's go ahead and let's use it inside the demo.css file. And in order to apply this style on this demo component, we also need to import demo.css file in this demo's component. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's use this demo component in the app component. So for that, let's open this app.js file. And here I will comment this JSX code. And here we simply want to use the demo component. Okay, so let's type demo. And in order to use this demo component, we also need to import it. So let's go ahead and let's import demo from this file. With this, let's save the changes and let's go to the web page. And in the web page, you will see that we have two buttons, this minus button and this plus button. And in between these two buttons, we are displaying a value. Now, currently, we are displaying a hard coded value here. So within this span element, you will see that we are displaying a hard coded value. Instead of displaying a hard coded value, let's go ahead and let's create a state. And we are going to create this state using use reducer. Okay, so to do that, first we need to import use reducer from React library. And now let's go ahead and let's use this use reducer within this demo component. Now, just like use state, this use reducer is also going to return an array. So here let's use this array destructuring syntax. And this array is going to have two elements. The first element will be the state and the second element will be the state updating function. Let's call this function dispatcher. And when we call this use reducer function, this use reducer function also takes two arguments. The first argument is a function. We call it reducer function. And the second argument is the initial value. So for the initial value here, we can specify zero. So that zero will be assigned to this state variable. But when we use use reducer, we use use reducer to manage complex states. And when we are managing complex states, instead of passing a single value like this, we always pass an object. Okay, so here instead of using this value zero, we are going to use an object. And inside this object, let's go ahead and let's create a property. Let's call it count. And initially, let's assign it with the value zero. So now this object here will be assigned to this state variable. And this state variable is an object which has this count property. So here within this span element, we can use curly braces. And here we can use this state variable, which is an object. And this object is going to have a count property. So within the span element, we want to display the value of that count property. Initially, that count property is assigned with the value zero. So in the web page, if I save the changes and if we go to the web page, 
here we have an error so reducer is not defined that's because here we have passed this reducer function to this use reducer but we have not defined this function so let's also define this function and we are going to define this reducer function outside of this demo component function so let's create this function let's call it reducer all right and for now we are not going to do anything here let's save the changes and let's now go to the web page okay so now the error is gone and you can see that initially it is showing this value zero when we are rendering this state dot count because initially the value of this count property is zero if i set it to 10 in that case in the web page 10 will be rendered as you can see all right now on these two button elements let's go ahead and let's add on click event listener okay and to this first button element to this minus button element i'm going to assign an event handler function here and i'm going to follow this event handler function decrement handler okay let's go ahead and let's create this function in the same way let's also add this on click event listener on this plus button and here we want to assign increment handler to this on click event listener let's go ahead and let's create this increment handler function all right now inside this decrement handler and increment handler function let's go ahead and let's call this state updating function so this dispatcher function now remember that whenever we call this dispatcher function internally it is going to call this reducer function okay and to prove this let's go ahead and let's use a console.log statement inside the reducer function and here let's say reducer function called let's save the changes let's go to the web page here let's open developer console let's clear everything and let me click on this plus button so when i click on this plus button first of all you will see that this message reducer function called has been logged that means when we are clicking on the plus button it is going to call this increment handler function and within that increment handler function we are calling this dispatcher function and here when we when we are calling this dispatcher function internally it is going to call this reducer function and to prove that we are logging this message in the console so here you can see that message has been logged here reducer function called but after that we also have the error that's because when we are calling this reducer function this reducer function is responsible for updating the state but here we are not updating the state within this reducer function and when we are not updating the state this state will be assigned with the value undefined and on that undefined we are trying to access this count property so that's why we have this error now to resolve this error what we can do is we can again return a new object and inside this object let's create this count property and we want to assign this count property with this value 11 okay let's do something like that for now let's save the changes now let's go to the web page let's clear everything here let's also refresh the page okay so when i click on this plus button you can see now we don't have any error and this reducer function called message has been logged here and this count property of the state variable that has been assigned with the new value with the updated value okay that means with this value 11 and after that no matter how many times i click here it is always going to stay 11 because that's the new value which this reducer function is going to return every time this dispatcher function is called all right so just remember that whenever we are calling this state updating function internally it is going to call this reducer function the function which we are passing as the first argument to this use reducer method okay so let me remove this code from here it was just to explain how this reducer function gets called now this reducer function also takes two argument the first argument will be the current state and the second argument will be action now this current state will be assigned with the current value of the state variable and this action will be assigned with the value which we pass 
as an argument to this dispatcher function. So currently we are not passing any argument to this dispatcher function. In that case, this section will be assigned with the value undefined. But it is also possible to pass an argument to this dispatcher function. So when we are calling this decrement handler here, let's pass an argument maybe decrement. And when we are calling this increment handler here, let's pass an argument increment. So when the minus button will be clicked, this decrement will be assigned to this action parameter. And when the plus button will be clicked, this increment will be assigned to this action parameter. Now, based on the value of this action parameter, we want to increment or decrement the value of this count property. Okay, so initially let's set its value to zero. And inside this reducer function, in order to set the value of this count property based on this action parameter, what we can do is we can use if else statement or we can use switch statement. So here let's use switch statement. And to this switch statement, let's pass this action. So this action, either it is going to be increment or it is going to be decrement or it will be set with undefined. So here, let's write some cases. So the first case is, if the value of action is increment, then we want to do something. Now, what do we want to do? We want to return an object. This object is going to have a count property. And here, we want to increment the previous value of the count property by one. So we have the previous state within this current state parameter. So this current state will be assigned with the previous state. Now previous state is an object. So this current state is also an object. And this object will have a count property, which will be assigned with the previous value of the count property of that state. And to this, we want to add one. And that's it. Now, we can write another case. So here the case is decrement. So if the value of this action parameter is decrement, in that case, what do we want to do? In that case also, we want to return an object. This object is going to have a count property. And here we want to decrement the value of previous count by one. So here we can say current state dot count minus one. And let's also write a default case. So in case when the action is neither increment nor decrement, in that case, we simply want to return the previous state. So we are storing that previous state inside this current state parameter. So we want to return that state. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me close this console here. And let's click on this plus button. So when I click on this plus button, you will see that the value of the count is incrementing and when we click on this minus button the value of the count is decrementing and in this way we do not have any other way to update the state other than the action which we have provided and this is a great way to make sure that your state only changes in the way you expect it to and not in some other weird unexpected ways so this is how use reducer react hook works in the next lecture Let's understand use reducer react hook with a more practical example.